Hello everyone, in this video we want to talk about the regression analysis in the Microsoft Excel by using Data Analysis Toolbox. You can see the Data Analysis Toolbox here in the Data tab and if you cannot see you should active these add-ins. You have to go to the File, Options, in the add-ins, press on the Go button and then checkbox these two and then press on the OK button and then you can see the data analysis toolbox here. So the regression analysis is the analyzing the relationship between two variables. So for example here I have age as a variable and I want to see the blood pressure in the different ages. So for example I want to know what person, what a regular person in the age 60 should blood pressure be. And I can use the regression analysis and see what can it be in the age 60 of blood pressure. So uh, the data, the regression analysis can be done in Excel via using the charts, line charts or using the formulas in the statisticals. So in the statistical, you can see, for example, intercept equation or function for calculating the intercept of the regression or the Linus function or the forecast or the slope function or other function that are here in the Excel. So what if I don't want to use the functions? I want to just have a simple and fast report in the Excel to have regression analysis. I can use the data analysis. So if you press on the data analysis toolbox, you have to go to the regression here and then press OK button. So in the first input, you have to say what is the range of your Y. The Y range is the variables, the second variable that I want to know the, the value for this based on the first input. For example, here the age is X and the blood pressure is Y because I want to know what will be the blood pressure of the person at the age 60. So I have to select the blood pressure as my input range. I need to select all my inputs so I use Ctrl Shift Down button and I also checkbox the labels because the first value is the text value and it represents the label of my column. And the second input is the X in range. So in the X range, I have to say what are my known data and what is the independent variable. So based on this one, I want to know the Y values. So I select the X ranges by using the Ctrl Shift Down button as well. So after that, I can say, for example, I want this analysis be done by the confidence level of 95%, and I want to have the interval estimations for regression coefficients. And also, I want to know the residuals, and I want to have the residual plots. I want to have the standardized residuals, line fit plots, and as well as the normal probability plots. So after that, I can say where I want to have my report. Yeah, I, if I just select the new worksheet, empty one, the Excel will create a new worksheet with the name sheet one. So I press OK button and Excel just generate my report here. So first, let's take a look at the charts. We have three charts here. The first one I want to talk about is the line fit plot. So this is the regression line for you. And these are your data. The blue one is your data and the orange one is your regression line. If you want to see the exact line, not the dot one, you have to select your orange dots, go to the format data, go to the format and select line and select solid line. You can choose, for example, red one and go to the marker and then select none here so you can see the line in the middle array. So this is your regression line. The next plot is your residual plot and this plot show you how well your regression model is fitted. If 
all these data, all these points are randomly distributed and it should be near to the zero. So I can see my data are random but the separation have a long range. It's from minus 60 to the plus 60. So I can say maybe my regression line is not well for this uh, kind of data or I maybe my sampling is not well so I have to resample and then the last plot is the normal probability plot and show me if my residual if my residual have the normal probability or not I can uh, select a line and insert a line here if this data be near to this line then I can say these are uh, these have the normal probability so this line should be near to the this line and uh, this is the uh, charts for my regression analysis and then let's see the tables here as well so in the first table we can see the multiple R it means that this is a R coefficient correlation between the X and the Y variables and it can be between minus 1 to the positive 1 and if it's be near to the zero, it means that there is no meaningful relationship between the X and Y and we should not use any regression between th those two. But if it's be near to the one, we can say there is a positive relationship between the X and Y and if it's be near to the minus one, we can say there is negative relationship between x and y the second one is r square which means that if it's near to the one there is meaningful relationship between x and y and if it's be near to the zero there is no meaningful relationship so as you can see here it's somehow near to the zero and that's why we have not well distributed residuals so it's may because the sampling or maybe we should have another regression model third one is adjusted or score and can be used for comparing their other regression models so for example if you have another regression model and if you want to convert this and with that that you can use the adjusted R score and if it's more that means it's better and it should be near to the one as well and we have this standard error and the total number of observation which means that the total number of our samples which is 649 in the second table we have an analysis of variance for this regression model and if x and y have the meaningful relationship or not so at First, we can see there is a regression, the second one is residual, and then we have the total. Based on that, we can uh, calculate the sum score of regression, sum score of residual, and the sum score of totals. And then in the next column, we have the mean of sum of the scores, and we can have the mean of sum of score of regression and residual and for total the mean of sum of total means the variance of my data so we have not the total here just because this is the same as variance and for seeing the meaningfulness between x and y variables we calculate the f statistics so this one just can be calculated by dividing this number by this number and we have the F statistic and then we can see the significance of F is this number which can be read from the F table the F distribution table so if this calculator be more than this significant F then we say there is a meaningful relationship between X and Y so this R score means that we don't have good sampling here right now. But this one said there is something between X and Y. 
And the next table calculates the coefficient of my regression. The first one is intercept. So, for example, here, if I continue this red line to the y x, the blood pressure x, then in some point that this uh, line intercepts with this x, we say the intercept of the regression, which is this one, the 104. And the Excel calculates the standard error, the T-statistic, the, the, statistic, the P-value, and based on this, it calculates the interval estimation. So this interval estimation saying that this number can be between these two numbers. And we have the regression coefficient of age as well here. This is the slope of my line and also we have the interval estimation of the slope as well. So right now, if I want to have a new x value, for example, the age 60, then the y can be calculated by having this number plus having the slope multiplied by the new x value. So the y is 135. I expect that for the person of age 60, we should have the blood pressure of 135. And then we, we can see the other tables which are for residuals. So this the first one showing which is the sample number. The second column shows me calculated wise, the predicted one. So the first one, the first value y is 130. But I calculated based on this estimation, the blood pressure for observation one should be 190. So the difference is residual. So if I minusing the actual value with the predicted value, then we can have the residual number. And if we standardize this residual, then we will have the standard residual. It means that we should minusing this one with, with the average of my residual in this claim and then dividing it by this standard deviation. So this is how the standard residual is calculated. And then we use the person tools for calculating the normal property plot so you can see if so by this way i can see if these numbers are distributed based on the normal property function so this is how we and then based on and then based on these values excel generate these two charts so this is how we can have the regression report by using the data analysis toolbox in the Excel. Thanks for watching. Until next video, goodbye. In order to watch more training videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Diaco OTD. And if you want to see our products, please visit our website, diaco.co.uk.